Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in this video we are going to be taking a look at some openings together with Dragon 3.3 and also Leela and Stockfish certainly have their say as well. Um, I'm not quite sure why I'm uh, interested in openings all of a sudden, but um, well, one of the things I was doing recently was reading uh, a book by the always uh, interesting uh, Victor Moskalenko on the perk. And um, uh, I started looking at the line with four bishop g5. And uh, well, there are a number of interesting things uh, that, um, that were highlighted. So I thought, oh, well, you know, let's uh, look at them a little bit more with, uh, with the engines. And uh, well, what I want to do is to focus on um, two particular lines. One is a sort of a side line, though very, very interesting. And another one is actually what the engines consider to be the main line. And in that uh, variation, Dragon 3.3 finds something absolutely stunning that really, uh, yeah, really just amazed me somehow. So um, let's have a look at both those things. We're going to start with the sideline. And uh, here it's uh, really Stockfish that's uh, going to show its, uh, its quality. So how does this line start? Well, it starts with E4, D6, D4, Knight, F6. This is the perk. Knight c3 and then g6. Many lines for white. Um, f4 is the Austrian attack, very sharp. Um, bishop b3, probably the most popular nowadays, a sort of uh, uh, English attack uh, kind of thing, very flexible. Um, but bishop g5 is uh, very, very interesting indeed. Um, I mean, actually, in, uh, in chess in general, uh, there's always uh, a very big debate about whether to put the, the dark squared bishop on e3 or on g5. Uh, you see that in the King's Indian as well. One of the lines of the Samish that I play, Samish with bishop g5, has, um, well, I played it for many years and uh, it's actually become very popular as well. But there's also the Samish with bishop e3. I mean, on g5, the bishop, um, well, puts a lot more pressure, you know, on the h4, d8 diagonal, makes it harder for black to play uh, e5 and grab some, um, some space in the center. Um, on the uh, downside, the bishop's a little bit more exposed and, you know, black can easily gain a tempo on it with h6. Um, that tempo with h6 is always uh, a little bit of a double-edged thing. Uh, you often try to claim that that's actually just a weakness of the king's side, but it can also help to strengthen black's king's side. It's one of those uh, kind of unfathomable things that, um, that you just have to, uh, to take a guess on, really. Um, one of the, um, um, the big things, though, about this line of the perk is that having the bishop on, on uh, g5, placing it uh, on g5 that early, it makes the move e4 to e5 from white rather challenging. And there are many dangerous lines that, uh, that black has to watch out for. So, um, well, if you give this to the engines, they want to follow up with, uh, with bishop g7, which is uh, perfectly fine. And now um, we've got two lines. The line that we're going to have a look at in a little while is the, the engine main line queen d2, which is also the, uh, the main line uh, in general. But there's a very sharp line that white can play, which is to play the move e4 to e5. Um, now here, black normally replies with the move knight fd7. Uh, D takes C5 is possible, but um, yeah, in general, uh, white seems to be just uh, a little bit better in, uh, in those positions. So knight FD7, and now white can play the move F4. Not the engine uh, main move. The engines want to kind of bail out a little bit with takes, takes, and queen D2, which um, um, is actually not so unreasonable there. I mean, the knight's been uh, chased away, and you're just threatening to go bishop H6, and you're looking to play H4 to H5. It's... Uh, Quite um, quite sensible, but f4 is uh, is obviously the uh, the big move to uh, to play. Solidify that um, that centre, and uh, well, ask Black what you're going to do. And the really strange thing about this is that um, you know somehow intuitively I would just say, well, c5 is the move that you want to play. Um, and um, okay, there's you know White's got some play in the centre, but uh, um, you know counterplay like this is always good. But actually, the engines are already at plus one point two somehow. They just say, well, I just take on d6. I'm threatening either bishop e7 or d takes c7. They only see knight f6 to uh, to cover that threat, and then d takes c5, and White's won two pawns. And uh, you know obviously Black gets a little bit of counterplay, but um, well, you know White's king is getting uh, out of the centre pretty quickly. It's clear that this is very very good for Black. For, for white, rather, sorry. So, um, um, I mean, one possible idea that uh, I suggested to the engines, and they thought, well, I was not too bad, would be to play h6 and g5. 
But it's not the uh, the main move. The main move is just to go castles, and uh, well, hopefully at some stage you'll be going uh, c5 later. Um, another big idea for black is to play the move f6. You know, you're attacking this bishop on g5, um, and then also getting ready to uh, destroy the center on e5. And, um, well, one uh, common move here is to play knight f3. And, um, well, Moskalenko mentioned a line. Um, he recommended something a little bit safer for black, but he, re but he, he mentioned a line and said that it was very, very unclear. So I thought, uh, well, it looked interesting. And, uh, well, when you've got uh, a whole battery of engines to, to help you, um, you really feel that, uh, that they should be able to help you uh, bring clarity into something unclear. Um, the best move for black, actually, is to play the move knight b6. Um, and well you'll see what the strengths are of this move but um, feels maybe a, a little bit slow but um, it's um, uh, actually realizing some important things but we'll see that a little bit later but um, one uh, big idea for black as well is to play the move f6 and um, it's quite uh, quite interesting really because um, uh, yeah when you give this to uh, to the engines um, even to stockfish you know the initial reaction is something uh, you know close to 0, 0.00 and then out of all the engines just playing at you know a 15 minute plus 3 time control stockfish uh, switches to um, uh, to well completely winning for white basically um, and you know no other engine does that um, the one that gets closest to it is uh, dragon 3.3 .3, but it needs a lot of nodes um, uh, starting from move 9 um, to be able to find the uh, the whole variation but it does manage it um, Leela uh, well and uh, I think that Mr. Beads ace Leela programmer has got some work to do Leela is blind even when you give it the key move um, at, uh, at move 13 blind is uh, always a, a nasty word I find but um, Leela doesn't really uh, grasp the uh, the seriousness of the situation you know even uh, when you give it uh, the absolute uh, key position on move 13 so um, yeah it's one of those positions where, where Leela's just got a blind spot not surprised to be honest because you're going to see just how amazing it all is the first moves could be played by any hacker that's uh, bishop c4 check king h8 and then h4 um, yeah, we're not worrying about our bishop on g5. We're just preparing to uh, to open up the king side. And um, yeah, I mean, black has got to take some action quickly. And it's not f takes g5 um, because you can meet this with the very clever h5. Um, this is the really nasty move. I mean, you're threatening h takes g6 and rook h7. That's the idea. And obviously, if g takes h5, then you've got this move knight g5. And um, the key point, well, you're threatening... Uh, uh, queen takes h5 or rook h5 or knight h7 whatever you want um, and a move like queen e8 um, if you're particularly keen you can meet it with the move bishop f7 with the idea of rook takes f7 queen h5 threatening queen h7 and also threatening uh, um, the rook on f7 um, the variation goes on um, I've got the the pgms uh, for you you know so uh, don't worry about that uh, the variation goes on it gets quite complicated but um, uh, white is plus five or plus six you know uh, so it's uh, it's it's pretty clear somehow um, what the uh, the engines all want to do and this is uh, the reason that they think this is um, this is fine for black um, is to play the move knight b6 and uh, the idea is you're hitting this bishop on c4 and um, and actually you know white's got to be very careful here if you go bishop b3 then all the engines think that after bishop g4 that uh, that black is better because you know the bishop is uh, giving some cover to the line squares of the king you know if you go h5 i can just play g takes h5 not easy to get rid of this bishop on g4 and of course the bishop on g5 is still hanging so yeah not uh, not great somehow However, um, we didn't play h4 in order to just retreat a piece when it's attacked. So h5 is the move. Now, uh, funnily enough, Stockfish, um, already in this position, um, is bailing out. It's playing the move g takes h5 in this position, which is not going particularly well, to be honest. Um, rook h5 is, um, is very, very strong. Um, and uh, even knight h4 is pretty nasty as well, intending... Uh, Queen takes h5 and knight g6. Uh, Stockfish managed to hold some draws, but also lost some games. 
But all the other engines want to play the move knight takes c4, take that bishop. And, uh, you know, the point is, of course, you know, h takes g6 looks very, very dangerous. But by taking that bishop on c4, you've managed to, uh, you know, to, to uh, secure a, an escape square for the king. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be terrible either. And, of course, you know, you're a piece up already and you're threatening to take this, um, this bishop on g5 at some stage. So, you know, that's, um, uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, some trumps for, uh, for black. So now all of the engines were, were choosing the same move somehow. Um, the point is, you know, obviously I'm I'm just threatening to uh, to take on h7 and then I'm going to get my knight out of the way and then bring my queen into h5. I mean, that's the, the big idea. So, I mean, if you go f takes g5, for example, I go check there, knight takes g5, and then I'm just following up with queen h5. And if necessary, castles and rook dh1. And, uh, well, you know, it's clear that it's completely over. Um, if you try and sort of open things up a little bit, um, I just go knight takes e5, which is again, you know, just freeing the path of the queen uh, to h5. So, you know, if you told me this was losing for black, I could also just believe you. But, you know, the engines, of course, they, they've got loads of ideas. And um, um, yeah, they're not, um, they're not saying that this is uh, defensible for black for nothing, actually. Uh, because what they come up with is the move knight e3. And, uh, you know, that's a, a confusing move in a confusing position. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes hard to really understand the, um, um, the logic of, a, of an engine defensive move like this. You know, why, um, why make, um, uh, you know, sort of a crude one move threat against the white queen, bring a knight that was, you know, not attacked into danger. It can be attacked and then captured. Why would you do that? Uh, and I think it's really about peering into the future and sort of understanding what am I going to have to do to break up the white attack? And, you know, um, what I've got to do is I've got to start opening up the position. I've got to start creating some stuff against the white uh, uh, position, hopefully with a, a bit of danger against the, the white king as well. And knight e3 does this quite nicely. Um, first of all, knight e3, it paralyzes the white king. The white king can't castle queen side, so you're going to slow down the attack just a little bit. Um, it's also attacking uh, c2 and g2, so there's a possibility of getting some uh, some checks. Of course, it's attacking the queen on d1, so it's a it's a big threat. So it's not like white can just ignore everything. You know, at some stage, white is going to have to move the queen. You know, so yeah, um, uh, black's not actually you know giving white a, a free tempo for attack. And the other thing is is that you know what black is aiming to do. Black's got got to get the pieces involved and. Uh, Basically, D, E and F, G are going to happen. And if you look at the knight on E3, it sort of connects up quite nicely with that with those moves. Because after D takes E5 or F takes G5, you know, we can connect further with E takes D4 and G takes F4. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a bit weird. I always believe somehow, you know, when I start connecting my pieces in those sort of ways, I always tend to somehow that gives me a little bit of extra belief in my position. I don't know whether that's just, uh, you know, something... Um, a bit stupid and random and childish, really. But, uh, yeah, that's always one of those uh, factors that always makes me think, oh, yeah, maybe there is something in uh, in my position there. So um, queen e2 is, um, uh, is the move that it's the most natural, you know, square for the queen. Uh, defends these two pawns and also keeps the queen going to h5. Actually, dragon, um, when you put uh, dragon on this position, um, on the position after move nine, um, and, uh, you know, it search, searches for a, a couple of hundred thousand uh, uh, million nodes. Um, it wants to play queen d3. It only switches to queen e2 uh, somewhat later. But queen e2 is, uh, yeah, it's the, the blitz move. It's the go-to move. Um, and now um, f takes g5 from, uh, from black. Um, yeah, what are you doing? Well, I mean, you're, you're actually opening up the line of this, uh, of this rook. You're kind of connecting uh, there and, you know, you're, you're freeing a bit of space and uh, for the um, uh, for the uh, for the for the black pieces, you know, and you're getting rid of an attacker. You know, it's just uh, um, you can't do anything else. And this is the absolute moment, really. And um, it's simply astonishing that Stockfish can stop this, can spot this at uh, four moves distance at, at a pretty fast time control and that no other engine can, and that Leela can be given this position and not find it. You can give it the, the next move that Stockfish plays, and, um, and Leela still will not understand that it's winning. You know, it's really quite incredible. 
Um, but in order to explain it, um, if you want to, you can pause the video and, uh, and have a look to see whether you can uh, find it. Um, frankly, you know, without any sort of warning at all, I probably wouldn't find this in 100 years. So, yeah, you know, it's one of those moves, really. But, um, uh, but let me just show you what happens after the most natural uh, line for white, which is to take on h7 check, uh, king g8 and knight takes g5. You can also do this the... Um, uh, the other way you can take on g5 and rook h7, but uh, yeah. I mean, this looks pretty abominable, right? I mean, you're just threatening queen h5 and then you'll have a rook h8, queen h7 checkmate kind of uh, thing or a, a rook g7, queen h7 mate type of thing. Um, but what the engines have spotted, and, uh, you know, this is why they're uh, they're going wrong, is something they're spotting stuff, of course, that a human would probably never spot. And that's that this move d takes c5 is actually pretty okay for black. Um, yeah, very hard for a human to uh, to understand this. Um, but let's uh, see see what it's doing. I mean, d takes c5, it's kind of connecting up and it's um, bringing the black queen into play. Um, and actually what that's going to mean is that the white king suddenly is within reach of being checked. And uh, the amazing thing is after queen h5, uh, black's got uh, this only move knight takes c2 check. And here... White's got to try and think, where am I going to put my king? Um, if you um, try and come over, over to here, king d2, then this is just an absolute win for black. Check, a check, and then actually I've just got this move, bishop g6. So the queen's, uh, well, the king's in huge danger, and you've managed to combine attack and defense. And of course there's no longer any threats against h7, and you're just going to win the queen on the next move, or mate black white's king. So that's nothing at all. Um, if you go uh, to e2, then um, the engines were... Ah, yeah, e2 is the, the main line. Let me just show you king f1 first of all. That makes more sense. And now rook takes f4 check. It's quite amazing, really. You know, um, I played fg5, and that activated the, um, the rook on f8. And now the problem is if king g1, now the other piece are activated with d takes e5. The queen comes to d4 check. And after king h1, I just uh, start uh, swapping off queens and I pick up a, uh, um, a rook on a1. And there's two extra pieces for black. Knight d5, I go knight c6. I cover everything. No more danger at all. So, um, yeah, I mean, actually, the best move that white's got is knight f3, which um, is, uh, is ending um, in a draw in the end. But, um, but obviously, you know, white was looking for a little bit more than that. King e2 is the, is the main idea. And the idea of king e2 is that after knight takes d4 check, which looks like an obvious way to do it, now you squiggle over to the king side and there's no longer queen takes d4. Queen, queen uh, takes d4 check. So black's no longer going to be able to have that, uh, that resource and, well, you're just going to go rook g7 or, uh, or rook h8 uh, next. So uh, you know, black's got some desperados, but it's, um, it's, um, it's not... Uh, it's not okay for uh, um, for black, but here in this position, uh, yeah, black's just got an amazing uh, little idea here, because you've got the move bishop g4 check, so that obviously is forcing white to move the uh, uh, the queen back to g4, because otherwise black's just going to take the queen, so that slowed down the attack, and now you go knight takes d4 check, and actually this is just going to be um, a draw by repetition. Because um, um, white can't go across to the king side because we've just got rook takes f4 check. So, uh, yeah. So, basically, uh, king e2, knight d4, king e1, knight c2 check is a draw. Uh, there's other ways to draw. So it's always, the engines always show other ways. There's rook f4, which is really quite nice. Then we go knight e6, rook g4, and here it's white giving the uh, perpetual like this. This was stockfish against, uh, against dragon. So that's incredibly nice and uh, so there what you can see you know this key idea d takes e5 and uh, just those two moves fg and de they've activated the queen and the rook um, and together with that uh, sneaky extra little tempo for the knight on e3 that gives black just enough resources to draw so um, um, understanding that um, you might still not be able to guess what white should play but when I put it on the board, I think you'll understand what the, uh, the key point uh, actually is. What Stockfish finds, and really nobody else finds, is the move e6. 
You know, what's the idea? Well, the idea is clear, of course. The idea is that Black doesn't have D take C5, but for heaven's sake, you are two pieces down already. Um, and what you're doing, you're just playing a pawn move like this, and the pawn is en prise. And the only aim is to stop Black from playing D take C5. I mean, it's it's simply, simply astonishing, you know. Um, I just have never seen anything like it. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I was looking at it and saying, what, what, you know, how is this supposed to work? So Black's got a couple of moves here. Um, let me show you the, uh, the main ones. You can have a look at all the variations in the uh, PGN. I'll show you the most uh, tempting ones. I mean, Bishop B6 is... Um, the main line and it's also the one that um uh, that that um that that leela thought queen takes c3 and now the move king g8 um yeah i mean if you play something like h6 i've got this move f5 opening up the line of the queen on the rook and uh well we're coming in with knight f7 you know for example rook f5 i go knight f7 check throw in a sticky rook h6 check takes takes king g8 takes takes Queen f4 check, I pick up the bishop. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, you know, material's equal, but there's some slight problems. The king can't castle, remember, so it's never get, getting out alive. Uh, the engines are winning this very easily. So king g8 was uh, was Leela's uh, sneaky move. And yeah, you know, I mean, it's uh, Leela was sort of seeing this as plus 0.3. Um, the Sockfish was already seeing it as plus 3 or something. Um, but again, yeah, you know, it's not super, super obvious. It's obviously it's good compensation, but obviously it's a win. Um, what Stockfish wants to do actually is to, to, to just pile in through the through the H file here. Castles, rook f5, rook h1, and you're just threatening uh, rook h8 check. So the best that um, uh, that the engines found was to take, take, and play uh, queen e6, and then rook g7, knight f4. The variations go on. I'll, I'll just play through them quickly, but it's simply astonishing, right? I mean, you know, I can barely, you know, <laughs> I can barely uh, fathom this, but this is the key idea. I can play queen f8 check, and after king f8, knight d5 check. But it's kind of, you know, if, not, if one of these things doesn't work, then you're just, um, yeah, you're not actually winning with white, but it does, so you are. But I mean, how Stockfish can see all this sort of stuff and evaluate it so well from just so far ahead on, on a small, small time control. Okay, it's my 94 thread machine, but uh, still 15 plus three. It's not spending a huge amount of time on it, you know, and it's just finding all this stuff. Absolutely amazing. Um, there's also a line that I think that Dragon was quite slow to, to notice. This might have been why Dragon didn't get it, because uh, didn't get it uh, or took, you know, m quite a lot of time to, to find this. Uh, because after um, Queen E8, um, this was um, uh, another move. Uh, again, Leela takes quite a while to spot this, although it does spot uh, the right move in the end. Um, yeah, you're just trying to get your queen active. You can't get active with D takes C5 after E6, so you play the move uh, Queen E8 to get it active via G6. And now, um, not um, um, the move rook h7, knight g5, queen g6, queen e3, knight c6, castles, knight b4, rook d2, bishop f6. It looks terrible, but the engines are all unanimous in agreeing that this is actually just uh, just equal. Um, but there's such a big blow that uh, there's no point in looking at that. It's knight e5. And of course, this knight is protecting the pawn on g6. Um, if um, you've actually got a huge threat anyway, which is to go um, knight f7 check in this position. And um, if king g8, then we've got g takes h7 mate. And if you go uh, rook takes f7, then I simply go, well, I can go rook h7 check, for example, and then uh, e takes f7. Um, so, you know, there's actually a huge threat here. And uh, if you take on e5, then I go rook check and queen h5. Uh, just threatening rook h8 and queen h7 checkmate. And if you go bishop h8, I've got lots of ideas. But I thought this one was very sweet, actually. Just queen h6, just uh, threatening rook h8 check with uh, with mate. That's very nice indeed. So what could should black play? King g8. We go queen h5, h6, knight f7. So we're threatening um, knight takes h6. But look at this. This knight on e3 coming in handy, knight f5. And then this is the, the key idea now for uh, for white. Stockfish finds, plays the move d5. 
And I mean, this is absolutely stunning, right? I mean, you're two pieces down with white and um, all that you've ended up doing is playing these moves e6 and d5 just to block in all of these black pieces. Well, these as well, yeah. And uh, well, obviously, I mean, you're threatening g4, you're threatening fg. Um, you know, the whole black position is collapsing. Um, funnily enough, um, uh, um, I think this was Dragoner's Black. Um, this might remind you of a very famous game, uh, Aberbach against uh, Spassky, where Spassky, also in such a complete bind, just gave away a knight on c6. Um, but um, actually, uh, Stockfish doesn't even take it. He just plays f takes g5, takes takes, queen c8, castle queen side, and g takes h6. Again, quite a stunning position. Never seen anything like this. Bishop c3, b c3, queen e3 check, takes, queen f5, check. There's no perpetual here, and uh, well, you can imagine what we're threatening. Um, a lot of very dangerous things here. So, um, yeah, uh, Dragon, uh, oh, this was Leela, sorry, with black. Leela threw in uh, some more checks, but uh, it didn't uh, get anywhere, and uh, Stockfish finished off an absolutely brilliant game. So that was that. Actually, uh, the video's got a little bit long, so I think I'll do the other variation in a, in a follow-up video. Um, but um, yeah, that was the, the genius of Stockfish, really. Um, so this very dangerous line for a white. Black has to play knight b6. I think you can see why, right? Stopping the bishop from coming to c4, able to meet h4 with bishop g4. Uh, but after f6, check there. It's not unclear um, or interesting, as uh, Viktor Moskalenko said in his book. It's absolutely lost for, um, for, uh, for black. But uh, yeah, the key point is, I mean, there's lots of genius along the way. But this is the absolute, this is the absolute stunner. Something, uh, yeah, you know, just completely out of, uh, of anything I've ever seen before. And uh, yeah, the main, you know, the main line that uh, another knight sacrifice, a third minor piece sacrifice within 14 moves. Can you imagine? Um, <clears throat> King g8, queen h5, knight f7 and d5. What an amazing position after, after 17 moves. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you liked uh, the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and Re-Engineering the Chess Cat Classics. Full of stuff like this, full of engine, uh, engine insights and hopefully you know, good human uh, explanation as well. Um, what I'm going to do, um, I'll uh, put up uh, the PGN of uh, this um, uh, video so you can look through all of the lines. Um, and uh, well, actually, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, split out um, uh, the next stuff, which is just as amazing. I'm going to split that out into another video and then we'll keep the, uh, the video length sort of, uh, sort of reasonable. But uh, yeah, you know, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're enjoying this and uh, well, hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.